So I've tried and tried and tried with the spanner, trying to get that one done, but it's seized on solid. I just cannot get it undone. There's only one thing for it. So the last few videos have been conversions or boiler moves, but I've got a change of pace this week. I've been running around doing jobbing, which is a nice change of pace to be honest with you. It's a little bit more laid back. I'm on the road most of the day. So yeah, I've really enjoyed this week. So I thought I'd film a few of the jobs, put them together and put them in video for you. Let me know what you think in the comments, any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Drop the video a like, that really helps out. And look at subscribing. We've done the 2K giveaway, announced in the last video. We will be doing the winner of that this week. So this week, we should, in the midweek, either midweek on the Thursday or next Monday, I'll announce the winner of the 2K giveaway. So make sure you get involved in that. As always, thanks for your support, and let's get straight into this one. So I've got a new kitchen tap going in on this one. You can see it's just one of the old one of the blocks. I'm gonna upgrade it. Um, this is the pipe work underneath. Let me just uh, put the light on. So as you can see, the waste pipe's in the way at the moment, but there's the isolations. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be reusing them. I think we'll get them replaced. Uh, stop top's just underneath there. I'll show you the tap that I'm having fitted. So it's one of these spray taps that they want. Um, it's got the weight on it which you have to attach, we'll go through that in a minute. Uh, if you look at the connections, it's the tiny ones. Luckily, very luckily, the pack comes with them, the adapters. So I don't carry them on the van, I got none on the van, so lucky them I'm in there. So first of all, let's get the water off and get the old one out. Right, let's get the uh, water off, which is tight. The old back arse one, and what you can do is put that end until you stop tapping, use it like a lever. There you go. Taps. Cold. Yeah, there we go, that's off. Now it is on a unvented, so I have to open both the taps. Luckily, it's on a new build, so I've got two drain offs there. Got both of them open there, just draining the water off. And I think what we'll do, just to make our life a little bit easier, is probably get this little bit of se waste section out of the way up here. Let's get this out of the way so we've got full access to the back. I've just started undoing that. I realised the washing machine's on next to me, it's now pool washing, so I'm not going to do that because it'll just it. So we'll have to struggle. Just go in the back, cut the pipe there, under the nut. I'll have to get the tap exit kit out and uh, see if we can get in there, get it out. I'm just going to cut that pipe, undo that nut. We should be able to get the old tap out. So we need to get them olives off and we've got two tools to do that. My preferred one is these olive cutters, really good to have. So the other method, which I'm going to have to use because the nut is really close to a joint, is an olive puller. So I'm going to show you how both of them work. Over the olive, line it up with the olive. And you can just squeeze. And that's break the olive. Like that. Let go. Pull up. Okay, quick and easy that is. Just trying to get in here, but get that down into the pipe. Spin this down. And you get the nut and tighten it onto there. Which one? Let go. Hold on. There we go. Let's get that nut to tighten onto there. So what should happen now as you tighten it on, it will start to pull the olive up. See, it's starting to come up. There we go. Come in. There we go. It just started spinning off to a bit, but normally, you know, that hard, it'll just twist down. Yeah, there you go. Let's pull the olive off with the nut. And there's the olive. It's not as quick as using the olive cutter, but yeah. Really decent tool to have that. Like, there's an attachment as well you use for 22 mil. So we use the Neuro Tab Big Fit. Add it a while, love it. The only downside is that's what it looks like every time we open it. It just doesn't stay in the foam. That's okay, we'll forgive it because it is a really good kit. So we need to find out what size we need for that nut. So I'm just going to take them out. Let's have a look. I think you can see it's still light. Yeah. I'm just going to take them out, put it on the nut, and see what size we need. Let's go for. 11 mil. So I've tried and tried and tried with the spanner, trying to get that one done, but it's seized on solid. I just cannot get it undone. 
there's only one thing for it. I have to cut the tap off. So I've had a word with Chris and I told him I'm going to try and get a blade in there to cut the tap off. So I've tried WD-40 on it, everything. I could spray the hell out of it with a, but it just, it's just seized on. Well, we're seasoning the multi tool. We thought, well, let's give it a bit of vibration. Try it again. And we've actually managed to get the nut off now. So that should pull out. We've got to squeeze them pipes together. Old one out. Gotta to get this in there. So we've got to feed all them there in that hole. I'm just going to get underneath now. I'm going to fit like this. So, bottom, that, give it support. Plate then washer, so it all screws up onto that. Washer and plate first. So busy these, I'm just trying to get everything through. There we go. Oh, you got to try and get through this tiny bloody hole now. So I've tapped in, but I've got to do the isolation valves and I've run out of flat faced isos. These are just standard ones. What you can do, you know, face, because obviously when you put the tighten that on, it can split the washer. So you want a flat face, just fold it down. Just take the sharp edge off. You want to damage your washer? Now you can use um, radiator tails but spray, it'll push it up too far. I'm already tight enough as it is, so in there. Yeah, just fold the end off. There you go. There we go, just took the sharp edge off and that'll be fine now. So let's get these in, uh, use a bit of paste. There it is, we use uh, JetLube B2 Plus. So yeah, just gonna get these isolation valves on. We get the tap connected up. You've got two new isolation valves on the back there. Let's get the new one. It's all back on. Taps all in. Hmm. Is that because the weight's not at the bottom? Could be. So I'll just move the weight to the middle. It's a lot better now. Yeah, it's getting back up. So let's give him a try. Nothing on the cold. Yeah, I'd help for unisolate the cold. So that was the kitchen tap all installed. Now this one was just a routine boiler service on an ideal logic, but when we went in a the loft, there was no supports on the flue. Now we always carry two or three clamps on the van because we do come across this quite often, flue is not supported correctly. So a couple of clamps on there, there you go. Always check the flue in the loft on a boiler service. Then the next one is a bath. It's not draining the way properly. It's taking forever to drain down, if at all, the moment to scoop it out with a jug. Then the customer had a look and he thought it might be the way the waste has been installed. Now, it's not on a very good drop, but it's still dropping slightly, so it shouldn't really gain that backfill. Here's how we sorted this one. This is one of the best tells I bought. I don't do much drainage, so I only do little things like this. This plunger, I've pinned. And it'll clear that easy, which is... A little bit of water in there so we can put our plunger in. That should do it. Over. Then we can just pull it up, try and do it one handed. Push it down. Try and get a good seal on that. Gonna plunge it a few times. What are you gonna do? I'll forget my other hand on there, hold it, pump it a few times, that'll go. There we go. Same body. That's took one minute. One minute of just pumping that. 
for God's sake, you know, the old flowers block them up. So I've just got a towel, put it over there. So it's blocking the old flower, I've pumped it a few times. There you go, that'll be fine. I've just found a plug on the side, let's give it a try. Give it with the plug in actually, so we see how well it drains. That's a lot better. Oh, you can see the water level going down. Yeah, that is a lot, lot better. You can actually hear it now going down. There we go. So for a fiver, that can earn, that can earn you some money in the right circumstances. So make sure you block off the old flower before you start plunging. Obviously, for the video, I can't hold the the camera. Block off the old flower and plunge with waste. So make sure you block off the old flower, give it a good few pumps with water in them, and push it out, and yeah, you clear blockage. So it's well worth getting a plunger on the van for little jobs like that. For regular customers, I'll always help them out like that. I don't advertise it. And normally if someone new finds me up and says, I've got blockages, so I don't do blockages. But regular customers, yes, I'll do simple blockages like that all day. This job, very popular this time of year, installing a smart thermostat. Now we're going for the hive. First thing we do, turn the power off. Then we can get the old Honeywell backplate out the way. Have a look underneath there. You've got live neutral two switches. Dead easy. So first thing we'll do, disconnect all the wires in there. Got the neutral live. Just undone them. We can get them out the way. Undo the back plate, then that will come off. Then the hive will just fit back perfectly with them screws. Now neutral on the left, live next to it, it is all marked up. Now the wiring for the hive is one and three. So the wiring on the hive is very simple, which is going to make sure there that all the terminals are tight. So to make a bit of room for your wire, that plastic bit at the bottom will just snap off. Then the wire will go nice and flush back. So when you put your receiver on, it's got room to incorporate the wire. There we go. Underneath, there's two screws, one on the left, one on the right. You just tighten them up. Now, plug your hub in and let it just do an update. It will just update itself. Then you're looking for that, that single flashing orange. That means it's searching for the receiver. Put the power back onto the boiler and it will double flash. Now, give it a bit of time and wait for it to go to a single flash. That means it's ready, connected to the hub and it's looking for the thermostat. So I'll put the four batteries in the thermostat. It'll come up welcome. Then what you want to do is just let that search for the receiver and the hub. And after a while, that single flashing orange should go to green and pair up. Then it will talk you through how to set up the schedule and that. We're just going to test it here, give it a boost. It should get two green lights, one on the top, one on the bottom. The bottom one is the indicator light. That means that it's on. And we're just going to leave the boiler on heat and the hot water permanently. And the thermostat will control the boiler. And there we go. That's how you install a hive. Nice and simple. If you've made it this far, thank you. Well done, you. Um, I need your feedback, though. What did you think of the style of video? So I've got two different, well, three different types of video in there. I've got one where I'm talking all the way through it real time as I'm on the job. Another one where I've split it where it's voiceover and I'm talking on the job. And the other one is just voiceover. Which type of video I'd prefer? Let me know in the comments because your feedback is valuable to me. I want to make the best content I can for you. Plus, you get a sneak peek at the giveaway. Here it is. It's, up, it's massive. Look. Look at that. So, yeah, this is what you get inside as well. Nice little giveaway that. So, yeah, make sure you get your entry in now. If you want to enter into that, you've got a comment on my last video. I'm going to link it here. You can watch that if you want. Again, thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you on the next one.